Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. PSR is excited to present to you Last Call, featuring your boy, the pimp slap P.O.D., Mike L. Pippin' ain't easy, but it's fun like money. Got bookies on the run, now it's time to get money. Not your typical way to ball. This Last Call, like some convicts waiting on the next draw. You can feel the tension that I mentioned. Fools better pay attention, cause we getting paid like a pension. T's on the ones and twos. And now, let's get to the pitch. We be pumping! What up, what up? Welcome on in. It's last call here, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Pop Sports Radio. You guys already know what the deal is here. We're going to get into this thing here. We do need to move with a brisk pace here. We got our guy, Jose, on the bases, Bucat, ready to roll with us in. We have action collectively, Jose and I both here, about to pop off three minutes to go. So this is not a show you want to be late for here. It's all about getting in, getting ready, getting fired up, and getting ready to cook the books together. Excited to be here today with you guys here. We've got two NHL games. We've got the big one, March Madness, the championship between UConn and Purdue, and a whole bunch of Major League Baseball. Let's get into it, guys. You know the deal here. We ask you to do three things on last call. Hit the thumbs up button. Make sure you go out there, show the support. Grab a pen and paper. You're going to want to write down the plays that I share, that Jose shares, and, of course, the plays from our chat. And then last but not least, guys, make sure you throw the plays in the chat. Very important to hear what you guys are involved with here. I think we got to go out of sequence, though. I see him backstage. I see he's ready to go. Let's jump in here and let's talk about this first game here with Major League Baseball. It's going to be difficult because he's going to have to hear the recap on Friday. I already told you we had to cut him loose on Friday. We couldn't take any more else, but he's back. He's ready. It's Monday. Let's bring in our guy, Monday's resident, the last call. Major League Baseball season is here. Say hey, Jose Bucat. Welcome to the show, my guy. Howdy, Mike. How's it going? It's nice to see you as always. Let's uh, let's get right after this game starts very soon. Well, I'll tell you what. I am uh, I am debriefing here. We are off location and uh, trying to enjoy what is a nice afternoon. We had a little bit of uh, the solar eclipse phenomenon that was nothing to do about Rochester. But Jose, six oh five p.m. I felt like we could not wait here. We don't want to catch up. We both like this game here. I'm excited to talk about it. 6.05 p.m. We got the Miami Marlins and the New York Yankees squaring off here. Jose, we're going to jump right in. We're not going to waste any time. We have 78% of the bets and 83% of the cash on this New York Yankees side. It's opened up at minus 162. It's dropped to minus 148. We got a falling total reverse line moving open at eight and a half. Now sitting at eights with 58% of the bets and 54% of the cash on the over. Nasty Nestor Cortez, Jose Luzardo, ready to go out there and get the job done. Jose, we have no time to waste. It is of the essence. Let's get this thing in. The floor is yours, my guy. Tell us what's happening right off the hop here, just about two minutes to first pitch. Yeah, that reverse line movement put me on the Marlins. I'm on their team total over three and a half. Uh, I believe in them here to get the offense going. I think you're going to win this game, honestly, just based off the line movement. I made a list of pitchers I want to back this year, a list of pitchers I want to fade. Nestor Cortez is on that fade list, so doing that today. Uh, team total over three and a half, not worrying about how baby Jesus does against the Yankees there. Minus 120. My guy, Jose Bucat, opening the show off here, leading off the number one guy. He's in the number one slot, and he's giving you the Miami team total over three and a half. 
Look, I, I was a little disappointed yesterday. I thought Miami loses this game. They got double-digit straight losses to open the season off. Did not happen, though. They did pick up that W. That being said, though, I want to fade these Yankees. I'm not into the business here of overhyping what happened against Houston. I know it's a ton of public money. I'm sure it's all into the soup there. But two things going on for me in this game here. First of all, we see incredibly low scoring first five games between both these teams, including the Marlins, whose bats couldn't be any colder. Nasty Nestor Cortez for me. Uh, is he going to survive the hump in this game? Maybe. But uh, I want the Miami Marlins. I want the first five under as well. It's kind of that mid-afternoon start, Jose. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at this thing thinking, yeah, it's going to start a little slower. I see now, though, we're down to plus 130s on the money line. So uh, value is dropping here. We've got plus 125s and plus 123s as well. So little uh little un uh, un uh, uh, you know inconsistent i guess is the word i'm trying to say here it's been a lot of afternoon cocktails and at the same time i'm thinking uh normally we don't just come out firing with these games but look we're now about 1 minute to pitch jose we got to get after it let's go we're here let's do it i'm on it i'm riding and uh i, mean, I think we're on the same page with another of our bets here as well it's going to be very fun to talk about well, I am super excited to get into it, Jose. We do have a couple of minutes, and I always like to start off with the recap. So I wanted to get that play out there because, heaven forbid, we go out there and cash and we can't get it in under the wire here with what's starting on this game. And, uh, look, I had a chance to tally yesterday. You know, when you and I were on the same side, it looked very good. Sometimes I went outside of the uh, wire there. I went outside the wire, and I took a couple of L's yesterday that I was not happy about, but I was excited to have. My first shot there with uh, Sunday and say, hey, plays of the day. Yeah, it was a great it? time. I went three and one and I fucking needed it really badly. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad that uh, we went together. It was a good day. Well, Jose, I uh, unfortunately, you weren't here. And uh, I would have said it to your face, but it just happened to be behind your back. And uh, it was Friday. I said, look. <laughs> Uh, I've had Jose working with me here on the ones and twos and everything else last week here. Our guy T shout out to T. I know he's back there on the ones and twos, but, uh, he was a busy man last week. I did not get the privilege of having him, uh, on my hip, if you will, but it was a bad week last week, Jose. I gotta be honest with you, man. Uh, it was not good. It did not feel good, but we needed a big Friday and, uh, we have nothing but transparency in this business, Jose, you know, that as do I. It's important we recap. We had to get that Miami Marlins, New York Yankees, Nestor, nasty Nestor Cortez out of the way. But how about this for last Friday's action? It was eight and five, Jose. It was six units of gain on an eight and five day. We pushed that Carolina Hurricanes under six there. They got the six. Shit, that is what it is. Four two final game pushes the under six. We cashed our Rangers. It was. A nice minus 134. The Flyers continued to suck. They lost. That was a difficult plus 105L. But then we went on a tear, Jose. Friday's show was a tear. We cashed the Edmonton Oilers minus 130. We cashed the Arizona Coyotes. Shout out to Mel and Kelly V. I know they were fading me with that Vegas spot there, but we did cash our plus 155. We got the Texas Rangers plus 120, Jose. Then we went in deep. We said, you know what? As long as the Rangers win, we're going to be up. But what did we do, Jose? We went with a little same game parlay, Texas, in the over nine and a half. That was plus 320. We just missed our Arizona Diamondbacks spot out there. Uh, I think it was 6-5 final. Uh, man, they were up like 5-2 the entire game. And uh, if you guys got the plus one and a half at plus 120, plus 130s, shout out to you. We took the L with the plus 270. We went for the big bank. But then, Jose. We brought it back to your boys. The Boston Red Sox handled business. The AL East out of conference continues to dominate. We'll put an asterisk on that for tonight. That was a big W for us. Uh, we got a, you know, kind of a so-so day in the NBA as well. The Pacers and Siakam double-double does not get there. Uh, that was a big score, though. Plus 195. Missed it. The Sacramento Kings over 226. Over didn't get there. But we added the nine and a half. That did cash for us. The Spurs plus 12 cash for us. And then the Minnesota Timberwolves shit the bet, shat the sheets, as they say, Jose. And uh, that plus four and a half was an L. So look, 
Eight and five day. Shout out to that big parlay with the Texas Rangers in the over nine and a half. We were able to get that plus money, Jose. Are you going to go attacking here, Jose? I did hear you say that your strategy this year, not to go so deep in player props. And uh, I don't know. I'm not to even about- go anywhere near them. What? You just, uh, you're just done. I don't want any plus 200s, plus 300s. Just going no. attacking sides and totals. No, yeah, I, I, I've swore off some bets, and, and unfortunately, you know, one of them was run line minus one and a half, minus two, all those minus ones. I've sworn those off, and of course, I bet one this year, and I lose because the team doesn't win a buy two, so that's classic. But yeah, uh, on minus one run lines, I'm minus forty two units on the last two years. Uh, not Whoa. good, not good. And on props, uh, I'm minus 30 units in two years. So I just, I have taken them out of my repertoire. They're just, they're just not something I do. So, uh, yeah, no, I don't bet them. I, I have had success tailing your RBI props. I will say that, but uh, it is just a dark, dark time for me in props. Well, we will, uh, we will get there. I looked last year. I didn't start playing official RBI plays until May. So. We still have four weeks or so to go until uh, kind of things start heating up for us. But that doesn't mean we can't find opportunities to get that cash early in the season. We'll talk about it. I did get one yesterday. Shout out to me on the old say hey plays of the day there. It was your boy. Yoshida got it for us, baby. Yoshi came through with the big RBI. Yeah, he's a beast. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Let's get into the show, though, Jose. We did get that Yankees play out there. The Marlins, Jose's on the team total over. I've got the first five under. Doesn't mean we can't see Miami get the team total over. I expect Miami to win. There's a little three banger to open it up. But Jose, we do love to shout out our chat. And we see the crew is assembled and ready for bear tonight. Our guy, Joe T consistently consecutively starting out as the open hitter here for us. Number one guy on base here. He says, Hey, Mike M what's up. Let's get that cash is MLB best bet today. Brewers first five and full game. Easy money again. You know what? That was my uh that was one of my bright spots on Say Hayes plays yesterday. The plus 140. Milwaukee came out there, got the first half. They got the full game as well, Jose. Were you surprised by that outcome enough? Yeah. Yeah. I've been surprised by the Brewers a lot. And uh, I saw I made a note of this last year. They started off hot last year and they're doing it again this year. So they'll tell off eventually, but you just have to kind of ride the hot hand right now. Yes, sir. The hot hand indeed. Brian Watson says winners Monday to Friday. Always here. Says Milwaukee. Yes, easy money on that brewer spot out there. I know that's a game we'll talk about here. The food town bet says James Paxton over five strikeouts. Sup, buddy. Let's get this cash. And our guy stacks Justin McCalvey, the stacks POD. He likes Azuna over one and a half bases at a nice plus 102 spot. Jose Court Wiley's in the house. Subhuman Gaucho says, in honor of Jim Miller fight week, we got to kick off Monday night with a couple of Miller by Miller parlays out there for our guy Subhuman Gaucho, and he's going to give it to us. He's giving us JT Miller power play point, JT Miller money line plus 600, JT Miller assist, and JT Miller money line plus 347. I don't know if the money line means goal scoring, Jose. I'm, um, I'm not entirely sure I understand what that breakdown looks like for us. Can you make heads or tails of it? You would you would know better than I, so no, I, I can't say, but I, I like that goal score uh, as well. And by Let's the way, go, Oldie, JT you're right. Miller. Let's go, subhuman gotcha. Jay PZ in the house. Nasty Nate says Celtics Bruins Red Sox smash. That sounds like a three-leg parlay, my guy, Nasty Nate. Jose, are you surprised to see Nasty Nate rooting Boston in its spirit and pride? No, uh, he's doing it because I can't. So I hope you keep cashing there, Nate. And by the way, and shout out to Rafaela, eight-year deal. Good times. Well, I don't want to point it out, but I, I think you're holding the bat upside down. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, you I'm hold it sure. however you want to hold it here. Okay. Mikey, as All long right, as listen. the wood's around, the wood's here. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna swing across the base with that thing, it's gonna splinter into uh at least a couple well, don't hundred worry. pieces. Don't worry, it's already broken, so we're half. Oh, it's there. ready. Jose's ready. Shout out the crew there. Pub Sports Radio. My guy T says a new week. Smash the like button for Say Hey Jose and the Pimp. Daryl Jones says championship night. Have UConn Futures plus 450. Bet the Diamondbacks first 
five minus a half. We're going to talk about both those games. DC Capper likes Yukon minus seven and the under 145. Shout out to my guy, Razor Sharp Picks. I know his $400 gambler's first glance is the under in that UConn game. Again, we will talk about it. Mr. Always Profit says Purdue plus seven and the money line for a big bet from our guy, Mr. Always Profit. Subhuman Gacho says, may have injured myself staring into that parlay. Well, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't hurt my eyes staring into that cloudy sky that was uh, the solar eclipse, Jose, but it looked like you guys had beautiful viewing down there in Texas. Yeah, it was really dark. Um, I While the eclipse was happening, I was in a Petco trying to uh, purchase dog food, waiting for one of the uh, slapdick Petco employees to come and service me. But uh, no, no, unfortunately not. But yeah, I was sitting there for like 10 minutes as everyone was like, oh, my God. I was like, all right, well, this is this, it's just dark out. But yeah, no, it was it was cool, I guess. I didn't I didn't really look at it either. I just look at the pictures on Twitter. So I think 80 years until you're back in the path of totality, but that path of totality was full of shit because uh we were certainly sitting in the center of it, and all I saw was gray clouds out there, but it did get dark. So let's uh let's roll on. Ron Lofton says on the Nerfy and the Yanks game and the Jays game, he likes the Nerfy in both of those spots. Jose, I know you're uh, you're not married here to player props this season. However, will you accept a salty mistress that are nerfies and yerfies as you look at your baseball season? Uh, when I'm feeling particularly degenerate, I do play yerfies and nerfies. Um, I would say 99% of those bets are, are nerfies. Um, but the, the Dodgers do tickle me when I want to bet uh, a yerfie. Like, you know, I just, just love having the thought of, uh, Mookie Otani Freeman coming up to the plate. Well, I don't bet them often, but they're fun to bet. I'll tell you. It, I love my friends in my gambling group chat love to bet them during the playoffs. Um, and they fucking always lose. And it's just so funny to watch as well. <laughs> so shout out to I them. did take the Cleveland. Uh, I did take the Cleveland Nerfie today. So I think I'm like two and one on the Nerfie Yerfies here. Uh, one and one on Yerfies, one and oh on Nerfies, I believe. Maybe vice versa. We'll see what happens here. Juggler23 in the house, though, says big E schools. Own a perfect seven and zero straight up and against the spread in championships games since 2001. Big Ten teams are winless at zero and seven straight up and against the spread. Big numbers out of there from our guy Juggler 23 Kong's clips is Mike. How do you feel about the first three under two and a half in that Yankees game? I would be uh, I would be for it. I think that first time through the order going to be crucial here. Nasty Nestor has to hang on to that curveball and everything else that he's throwing across that junk across the plate to be able to get that under. But we will see. Juggler 23 favorites are 49 and 19 against the spread. That's a 72% win rate. The last 68 Big East NCAA tournament games, including 21 and 5 against the spread the last two years. That's some great numbers. Let's get that on the big screen for everybody to check out. Fernando Mendoza has already took the first 500 in this game and the White Sox. Robert Martin says two for two guys. We're hot. Oldie says pins up. Go Marlins. Juggler 23 says as good as Big Ten teams have been in the big favorite role. They've been brutal as underdogs of five and a half points or more this tournament. Six and 52 straight up. 21 and 37 out there. Ron Lofton says on the Guardians game, the first five under four and a half doing nice so far. JPZ says big line move to the twins. I've seen the twins play. I'll have more respect for the market if they beat the Dodgers because the twins suck. Yeah, that's an interesting spot out there with this line as well. Juggler23 says, since my power ratings make UConn just a three and a half point favorite, my only play is the under 146. Five unit play for our guy, Juggler23, Jose. What do you think about that? Under and that UConn big game. Under, I don't know about because I don't do math, uh, but I do like UConn. I, I think I, I haven't looked at the the, um, the market too much, but uh, I saw a bunch of money on Purdue and the line's still moving to UConn. So you guys know how that goes. Well, Subhuman Gotcha's got some hockey plays, Jose. He likes the hockey play of the day. The Penguins' first period money line at plus 120. The subhuman play of the day is 11 and 4, Jose. It's up 13.71 mm. units from our guy, Subhuman Gaucho. How about that, Jose? Shout out. Shout out. What are you on in, in hockey, Mikey? 
Well, we got a couple games to talk about tonight. I'll tell you what, right off the hop here, we can uh, we can have some fun and talk about this thing here. The big spot that I'm rolling with here is not this first game. Jose, I just don't want to get involved in this uh, Toronto-Pittsburgh matchup. Frankly, for me, I've been looking at Pittsburgh, and I'm surprised that they're doing what they're doing. The winnings that they've been collecting have been losses to my bankroll. So that being said, I see Toronto has moved to like a minus 140, 83% of the bets and 81% of the cash on Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't want any part of it, but I'll tell you where I am going, Jose. It's going to be a late night apparatus for us here. It's Vegas and Vancouver. Now, I took a late night beating last night there. Colorado Avalanche did me dirty, but I'm looking at this game here. We've got Vegas, of course. They've got to go back to Logan Thompson. Aiden Hill continuing to be out of the lineup as undisclosed injury status for this guy. Logan Thompson, 23, 13, and 5. I feel like a broken record. We've been talking about this guy. And the tread wearing off the tires for this Vegas team. That's why we felt comfortable taking that Arizona spot last Friday. And I want to fade these boys again with this Logan Thompson setup here. On the other side of things with Vancouver, we know they've been dealing with injuries of their own. Thatcher Demko has been out of the lineup. Casey DeSmith has gone into the lineup. They've gone, oh, I'm sorry. They've lost two of their last four games in those spots with Casey DeSmith, but he's getting a much needed break tonight in the action. They're going to Silvos. We've got Logan Thompson with a 2.72 goals against average, a 90.8% save percentage. We've got Silvos. Who the hell knew this guy? Two and no. A uh, guy was fucking scraping the ice off the Zamboni there uh, just a season ago, but here he is starting in goal. He's got a 1.5 goals against average and a 93% save percentage. There's a lot, two or fewer goals in each of his starts. Unbelievable. He had a 20 save performance on 21 shots, a 2 1 win against the Arizona Coyotes. Look, Jose, after a situation where we see a Vancouver game go over, they're winning at a 72% clip, 72% of the season after a game where they had an over. I'm taking Vancouver. You asked me about my hockey spot, Jose. I'm jumping in with this Vancouver Canucks team. What do you think about that? The Canucks, yeah, I root for the Canucks just to see my father Jimmy happy. So I like that. I know he hates the fucking Knights. So shout out to the Canucks. Well, we do have a minus one twenty. That's still the number sitting out there and hanging on it. For anybody that is curious, sixty five percent of the bets, eighty one percent of the cash on the Toronto Maple Leafs. The line has dropped thirty cents from the minus one seventy two to minus one forty twos with all that money coming in on Pittsburgh, but. Don't fret that thing. We're going to get that. Hope I'm not the one that's frozen. It's uh, or hope I guess I'm frozen. It's not Mikey going on right now being frozen. It'd be tragic if it was. Am I frozen? Oh, there we go. You're back now, Mikey. Welcome back. I was hoping it was me and not you. But yeah, you were frozen there for a second. Go ahead. Well, let's. Let's roll on, Jose. I was just talking about the NHL season that we've had here on Last Call. It's been triumphant here. We're just over 50 units on the season in the NHL. We'll get a full recap here as we're down to the last week, but it's been glorious in hockey, Jose. How about that? I'm not surprised by that. You're a hockey guy. You know it. <laughs> well, let's go on to this Major League Baseball schedule, Jose. I asked you to come in early because we do have a play popping off for you. It's 17 minutes away. You want to tackle the Brewers and the Cincinnati Reds. Our guy Joe T's already talked about that first five and full game. We've got a line that opened up at minus 105. That means we had a minus 115 favorite for the Cincinnati Reds. 29% of the bets, but 78% of the cash have rolled in on this Milwaukee Brewers team. They've gone from now a minus 105 to a minus 106, a small move but a correlated move with where the cash is coming in, Jose. Then we've got this total that opened at nine and a half, sitting at nine and a half, 62% of the bets and 68% of the cash on the over. Yeah, we don't have any line movement here on this total, Jose. Illuminate this game for us here. The Brewers have been out there kicking ass, taking names. You know, we like to talk about putting bat to ass. Six and two on the season versus this five and four Cincinnati team. Cincinnati, of course. You know, they've been on a nice little homestand there against the Mets, but they went one and two against this Mets team. 
What's going to happen for us here in this Brewers Reds game tonight, Jose? Bat to ass. That's interesting. Bat to ass there. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, I took a minus 105, as you can see on the screen. Shot to T. Um, but yeah, I had this opening up as the old Cincinnati Reds minus 110. Uh, Brewers even money, and it's flipped all the way to the Brewers now minus 106 there. Um, and we've bet into that this you know that flip uh, three times now, I believe this season, two and one, our lone loss uh, on a one run loss in in the Cleveland Guardians Seattle Mariners game. Um, so I'm just gonna keep betting it here and until I go broke, I guess. So uh, definitely taking the Brewers here today, full game money line. Um, the Brewers have been hot. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I don't know why they find a way to start the season hot. So Brewers for me. I like that Brewers play. You know, I hear Joe T talking about it. I hear you talking about it. The Reds to me just feel like there's been, I don't want to say overcalculated, overvalued, I guess, right? They're overvalued. And I believe they're overvalued based on what they did last year here. Uh, you know, we saw them banging the ball everywhere. Spencer Steer, uh, of course, they like fruit. I mean, the boys have been crushing, but. Not so much to start this season off, especially at a at a park like they've got there, where you 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 know you'd like to see some balls getting out of there. There, they just have not been able to find the W here. I think it's a great spot for this Milwaukee Brewer spot here. I might have to I might have to double back with you guys and try to take advantage. Let's go. Well, let's hope so. Let's fucking hope so. But yeah, Brewers full game for me. Going to be fun. Well, we have another seven o'clock spot, Jose. Seven o seven p.m. We've got the Seattle Mariners. They're on the road. They're going up to the six, baby. Toronto Blue Jays out there hosting another AL East team trying to massacre the rest of the Major League Baseball uh, standings here. And we've got a line that opened up minus 125 in favor of the home Blue Jays. Jose, 55% of the bets, but only 29% of the cash on the Toronto Blue Jays. It's dropped seven cents now to minus 118. The total's falling as well. It opened at eight and a half. It's down to eight, 79% of the bets, 61% of the cash on the under. Correlated movement. It's Jose Barrios. It's Castillo on the other side here, sporting a 675 ERA and an 0 in 2, Jose. Any thoughts or insight on how you think this game might break down? Yeah, it's a tough game. Uh, I think very highly of Castillo. Um, and he's been just shitting the bed four and runs in his first two starts, but the market is, uh, you know, kind of indicating that this is a Mariner spot. It's very interesting. Like you mentioned here, go over it again, 45% of the tickets and 71% of the bets on the Mariners or sorry, backwards there, 45% of the bets and 71% of the money, I should say on the Mariners, um, and the lines move towards them. So. I lean that way, but no action here. It's very interesting because, you know, obviously um, a lot of Seattle fans, uh, or sorry, a lot of Canadians go down to Seattle um, to go see the uh, Blue Jays play. So I'll be interested to see if if we get a, a big Seattle Mariners contingent, but I don't know. Well, Jose, I, uh, I said this yesterday on your show. I'm a proponent of the AL East when they're non-conference, non-division opportunities out there. They've been beating everybody up last season, particularly. They were 75% clip outside of the division. And then inside the division, these guys are just slugging each other around at 50%. But we cashed on this trend yesterday. It was your Boston Red Sox. I'm going to go back to it here. Jose, when we've got a situation where we've got a road team, they're between a minus 120 and a plus 110. They're 21 and 1. They're winning by almost four runs a game if they've got a line that is longer than the previous timeout. God, he was rolling. He was rolling so I mean, good. The situation yesterday with the Red Sox, I'm rolling in here. Give me this Blue Jays situation. I got to go the other direction here. I'm taking Seattle. Oh, you're getting the Seattle. All right, beautiful. You froze there for half of that. Uh, but I, we did hear that you're on the Seattle Mariners and you're on them full game. I'm rolling full game. I'm not going to mess with the first five. I think this is that spot that I talked about yesterday on your show. When you've got the favorite between a minus 120 and a plus 110 and a line that's longer than the previous game, they're 21 and one, and they're winning by almost four runs in those spots. Jose, it's a big opportunity for me to take advantage with a nice plus money spot. 
Toronto rolling back up to the six, trying to get things done here. But Seattle can't feel good about the way they left things off that last series. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I, I like that play. I'd roll. I roll with you. Uh, by the way, Nicholas Handy's all over the red. So, Mister Handy, good luck. Wish you luck, man. Bear pig on the Blue Jays. Desmond or sorry, Dustin and Jamie also like the Blue Jays as well. There. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, we'll see what happens here. You know, baseball's been kind of a sluggish start, but. Uh, I, you know, I like what they did early. I like what they did against the Yankees as well. I just think here's a spot with Seattle that's been underperforming early to kind of kick things off. And uh, at 7.45, Jose, we are kicking things off with the Philadelphia Phillies and the St. Mm. Louis Cardinals. Here's another game that we both have kind of queued up and we're ready to attack. And uh, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on this game here. When we look at this number on the onset, we've got – 80% of the bets, 77% of the cash. This Phillies line moved from plus 105 to minus 102. A little dog to favorite type of situation with seven cents of movement. The Cardinals open up at minus 125. They're down at minus 110s. Again, 77% of the cash on the Phillies. And a total that is essentially frozen. It opened at nine. It's sitting at nine. We have no visibility in the cat, but we see 56% of the bets on the under Jose. Big opportunity here. I do believe we are aligned in this game as well here. Uh, tell us about what you think is happening here with this Phillies and Cardinals game. Yeah, we are. We are both aligned. Uh, Mike, I remember you told me, I don't know how long ago, the, the Cardinals, if they're favored in the first game of their series, fade their fucking ass. And uh, I'm listening to you here. Uh, Philadelphia Phillies uh, money line. I believe this is also uh, another spot where it opened up as the other team favored. Yeah, I'm have this opening up at minus 120 for the Cardinals. Now, who knows what happened? Maybe it was a pitching change. I don't know, but it just just chugged all the way and flipped all the way to the Phillies here. Um, and actually a little, and, and we're kind of getting it. we got a shit end of the line there, Mikey, cause it's, it was minus one Oh five. Now you can get yeah. plus one Oh one, which is, uh, which is nice apparently. Um, but I, I still like the Phillies here. The line is chugged all the way their way. Um, you know, 80% of the bet, 77% of the money on them. So that makes me feel better. But, uh, again, uh, I love, uh, those flip spots and I'll ride the uh, Phillies here with you. Well, you and I are aligned, and, and I did write it down just for uh, edification here as we talk about this thing. The St. Louis Cardinals, the first game of a series as a favorite, are 7-24 and 24 over their last 31 first games of series in the favorite role, Jose. Not a spot I want to have my cash on there. I think these Phillies, with Turnbull going to the mound there, big opportunity. They brought this guy in for a reason. I think we're going to see what happens here tonight. I think it's ready. It's loaded up, and it's a great Philly spot to get this cash. I'm excited to be aligned with you, my guy. Yeah, this is going to be a fun night, and uh, I think you're uh, I think you're going to be on with me in that other game as well to start off. So it's very funny. Saturated. What are you talking about? I'm on the I'm on the airwaves every day, giving out baseball. You'll see me every day. Saturated. Don't worry. I'm here, Poppy. He was there earlier today on the sesh. Now, um, you know, typically speaking, when it comes to the sesh, Dutch does not let me get on there with other guests. I don't know if I just, uh, if I mix it up too much. I'm not sure exactly what uh, what happens, but I had to go so you could come in. That's just how Dutch wants to run things over there. I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, there's too many people on screen. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> JP too much says, personality. Michael, hard to, Michaelis is hard to fade. And then he says, just kidding out there. Yeah, we love us fading some Michaelis. Dale Fix says, but St. Louis is two. And this, Saint, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they've gone. I think they've won two this year. And uh, look, and I'm not going to go off of a, a solid trend like that here. We'll see what happens. It's early in the season. Plenty of time. There's Kelly V in the house. She says, Billy, Harper to get a home run at plus 290. Sprinkled two homers for Bryce Harper tonight at plus 2,500. Castellanos, one home run, plus 480. And two homers at plus 5,500. With Kelly B rocking and rolling there, Jose. Big Did night. Did you just say Nick for, Castellanos, uh, two home runs? Two. Likes the two spot wow. there. I mean, I guess, five yeah, five. it's the eclipse, so I get it. I get it. <laughs> Sir, I, 
I didn't realize there was a correlation between the eclipse and, uh, and, and you know, well, just, let's go. Just let's... Things happening in the world, you know, Mikey, if, if something bad happens, he'll fucking hit a home run. And uh, who knows? I guess this is something bad. Well, Jose, we've got two games left in Major League Baseball. Then we're going to roll on to college basketball. Shooty hoops, as I've heard you call it. And then we're going to rock it down and yep. shut it up. Put the bow on the show and get everybody up here on their way out of the day today. The next game I am looking at, though, it's going to be 8.40 p.m. Eastern. It's the Arizona Diamondbacks, baby. The Snakes and the Colorado Rockies going on on the other side of things here. A line that opened at minus 180. Big road favorite for the Diamondbacks here. 89% of the bets, 64% of the cash on uh, on those Sorprientes. The Rockies on the other side of things here. Plus 150. Moved to plus 152. Lots of cash on the over. 54% of the bets, 81% of the cash on the over. Expecting runs in Coors, Jose. Would you be surprised if there were runs in Coors tonight, Jose? Let's uh, let's start there. Let's talk about this total. No. No, I would not be. Just flat no. There you go. Dynamite dropping. Let's keep rolling. Let's talk about this matchup here because when you do look at this thing on the surface, what do we have going? We've got Freeland and Gallant. Freeland. He's almost got triple digits working in the ERA category here. He's 0-2 to start the season. But can you trust Zach Gallon? I see he's 0.82. He's got a 2-0 record on the season as far as things are concerned for Arizona, Jose. What's going on with this guy's control and uh, velocity? Is there a reason to believe that maybe we're seeing an early peakage here from our guy, uh, Zach Gallon? You'd think so. It's very interesting. I was just... Uh, pulling up Zach Gallon's uh, record against the Rockies because I'm sure it's Sterling, but uh, where is this game at, Mike? It's at Colorado, right? It's in course. Yeah, so I have him as, I mean, obviously he's, he's pitched well against them, blah, blah, blah. Six innings, four hits, three earned runs, seven innings shut, six innings, four hits, three earned runs, seven shut. Seven. Okay. Yeah, he pitches well there. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I, I'm scared to fade Gallon at all times. I did it earlier this year and paid the price for it. So I'll tell you what. I was surprised when I looked at how this Rockies team performed here. Now, granted, Tampa Bay, but nonetheless, AL East there. They came out and opened the series up. I always thought about that fade the team their first game back home, but they came out there and whooped up on Tampa Bay 10 to 7. Subsequent losses, six to eight and uh, and three to two as well to Tampa Bay. So one and two over that stretch there at home. But now here they go, opening up yet another series. And, and Jose, I'm dog hunting here, man. We're going for the gusto. It's plus 155 right now. You got a favorite or a small dog. They're off a loss as a dog or a small favorite. They're two and 20 in those spots. But for me, Jose... It's the margin that jumped off the page. It's 3.55 runs a game that these teams are losing here, suggesting a big fade spot. Now, I know these Arizona bats have been hot. I talked about that in that Atlanta series. I said these bats are running plus one and a half galore, but here they go. That last game of the series did not look so hot there. They got kind of handled, and that was a big under when everybody thought bullpens would be a spot for those guys to go over. But it's the old lefty situation, the lefty writer, the age old question in Major League Baseball. And what we've got going on again, favorites are small dogs. Off a loss is a dog or a small favorite. Two and 20, losing by 3.55 points a game when they're facing a lefty starter on a big total, Jose. Big opportunity here for the lefty to come out there and get the job done. I'm going with this plus 155 spot. I'm taking a shot. I want this cash. Much like we did yesterday, Oakland Athletics got there for us at plus 164. This number's dropped, though. The best number I can get right now is plus 152, Jose. You going to go dog hunt with me? No, I am not. But uh, I'm super pissed that I didn't take the A's team total yesterday because uh, I just didn't trust Flaherty, and I was pissed off I didn't do that. Uh, but, yes, I am not dog hunting with you today here, Mikey. This one's all you. Uh, well, that is fair. I will stand on the island of Colorado Rockies and Coors, and uh, I will plant my flag in the ground. It's plus 152 now, but uh, that just gives me kind of that added confidence. Now, 
I did write a note down kind of in the margin. If you're one of those reluctant bettors, you, the plus money scares you like that. You can get the plus one and a half. It's like plus one of five. There's even some even money spots out there. But look, when you're taking a team like Colorado, you don't want to go out there and play scary. You don't want to take these teams to say, well, they'll lose by one run. That's that's not how we're going to get that cash here. If we're going to take the L, we're going to take it for the unit. But I think in this case here, that lefty matchup is strong for us. And we get plus 152 to work with it. So Brent Cook says question. Rockies off the double also, also makes it more intriguing. Go ahead. Mike, I have a question for you. Uh, shout out to Jimmy the Bag, as always. Uh, he was a big proponent of the Coors Field fade. And you take the underdog uh, minus one and a half here uh, to get real big plus money there. And obviously the higher variance with Coors Field and all the runs, et cetera, et cetera. Just something maybe uh, maybe consider today. If you want to go that big, big dog hunting, you take that one and minus one and a half on Colorado, fucking probably like plus 400 or something like that, I'm sure. Some ridiculous. Well, this is why this is why I always talk about the uh, the margin, Jose, because we see this thing here with this margin that's sitting there at, um, you know, three and a half runs. Yeah, I mean, if you go minus one and a half right now, it's plus 265. These guys to win plus by two, 265. Maybe wow. Plus 265 right now, minus one and a half. You can even go, by the way, with a 355 margin, you can go minus two and a half at plus 420 in this case here. I thought that for me early in the season, I'll definitely chase some of these big dogs down with some of these reverse numbers. I still need the data to mature a little bit for me before I start firing away on some of those reverse lines. But, oh, yeah, I mean, they're winning these games by over three and a half runs. And the lefty matchup has reigned strong when it comes down to this particular stat. So, uh, yeah, you can definitely take a shot, take a big score, maybe sprinkle a little bit of that cash there on the minus one and a half, minus two and a half. But, you know, you play your you play the unit on Colorado and then you try to go for the big home run, Jose. Why not? Why the hell not? Why can't we exactly. have nice things, Jose? Yeah, I, I ask myself that very much often, Mikey. Why can't I have nice things? Why? Uh, but no, it's uh, I like your action here. I'm, I'm excited to uh, to roll with you here on the some of those spots earlier. So I'm, I'm ready to get it. Well, I've got one last spot, Jose. Then we will get you up out of here. We'll talk college hoops. Unless you have a spot there you want to share with us in the college hoop world here, 940 PM. We've got the Chicago Cubs taking to the road. You Darvish, huge garbage. You Darvish on the mound there with the San Diego Padres and a line with 61% of the bets and 67% of the cash. The Chicago Cubs have moved from plus 120s to plus 116s. And we kind of have a, uh, I call it frozen number here on the total. Opened at seven and a half. It's sitting at seven and a half. We have 57% of the bets and 93% of the cash on the under in this spot, Jose. Seems to be that the general consensus is Assad and Darvish are going to go out there and stand on their heads. We look at the Padres coming off that loss on the road at San Francisco, now going back to host things at home. And then we've got the Cubs' big series out there, two and one against this L.A. Dodgers. Jose, what's more surprising, that the uh, Cubs are sitting in a plus 115 spot here with some cash pouring in on them today, or the fact that they went two and one at home to open up the series against the L.A. Dodgers? Uh... I think I guess the plus money here, really. I think the Cubs are going to win their division, uh, most likely. I don't have a firm feel of it, but the Cubs are going to be a division winner. So going into their house and taking uh, two out of three is pretty hard, even if you're the Dodgers. And I think the Dodgers are a little overrated. So I'd say the plus money here with the Cubs is being as high as it is. But it's Javier Saad and you Darvish has made a lot of people a lot of money this or the last few years, I should say. So, um, But I agree with you. I think he's vulnerable here. Yeah, I had a uh, I had a big spot here to fade on Darvish here. Uh, in this particular favorite role, it was a 7-18 and 18 opportunity for me to fade Darvish. I get it. Last year, great season. But I also entered last season saying I think he's huge garbage there. His previous two seasons beside that were um, less than to be desired. I know I talked about this with Daddy Cab. I see him out there. He likes Smith over one and a half threes, a plus 150 added to his card. But, you know, he was talking about it being 3-0. and oh, and Last I checked, the stats reset when you go from preseason to regular season here. So uh, I don't know. You think uh, you think that we're going to see Darvish go out there and command with his breaking ball and everything else that goes into the lineup, or do 
do we see Chicago continue to rain down supreme against all these guys that are West Coast baseball teams? I uh, I don't know. This one's a stay off game for me. I'd rather be on uh, the Cubs, though. Uh, maybe I consider a Cubs team total just so I don't have to worry about a sod. But that's just me being safe there. I get it. I fully do. I am rocking in, though. I'm taking this money, you know, just like we've done in the NBA, just like we've done in college hoops, shooty hoops, Jose. Uh, mm -hmm. It needs to all correlate. You know, our guy, Jimmy the Bag, talks about that all the time. We need to see the trend. We need to see the cash flow. We need to see the pitching matchups. Everything has to check the boxes before we go and take advantage of them here. And, in fact, that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to go with these Chicago Cubs. Man Bear Pick says, had the Cubs beating the Dodgers, but passed on this. Lean the Cubs, though, plus money spot. I mean, and we see this money moving in that direction here, not just to take plus money for the sake of it, but look, the best of the best still lose one third of the games of the season. And I do not believe you, Darvish, and the San Diego Padres are in that best of the best category. Rogue Energy says fading the Cubs after the big series win as well. That was home. That was home opening. There was a lot going on in Chicago. You don't think they want to go out there and take this dysfunctional San Diego Padres team to Matt? Let's go. Yeah, sorry, I had my headphone died on me, so I had to switch headphones there, so I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> it's probably better that way anyways. Steve G says the Rockies fade train, 8-2. and two. They're up six units this season. I don't disagree with that, Rockies fade. I do believe, though, there are going to be some, just like the spot where I see a lot of guys are just auto-fading the L.A. Dodgers, too. Like, listen, as a guy that did the uh, hip to be square last season, well, talk to me at the halfway point of the season. It's a pain in the ass to track that shit every single day, Jose. I'm telling you from experience yeah. here. And once you go down enough units and you're down 10, 12 units, do you really give a shit anymore? It was a fun experiment while it lasted. But we will see what happens when it comes to fading the Dodgers, when it comes to fading Coors on their home field as well. No, I agree. It's a tough uh, it's a tough thing to do there, to, to fade the Dodgers. So. I tried. That's it's definitely not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I mean, you're up big units now with this cup spot, but Jose, before we let you get up out of here, uh, you know, there is a big game here. I know there's a big show tonight. The boys are going to be rolling. They're going to be live betting and sweating on pub sports radio hosted with Jimmy, the bag and the cast and characters will be assembled. It's Purdue and Yukon. It's the biggest game. It's a number one versus number one. It's the two top ATS teams in the country in the postseason over the last two seasons. And here we go. We got the big man and Zach Eady. We've got UConn. UConn, UConn, UConn. Everyone's talking about these guys. Can they repeat after winning the season last year? 52% of the bets, 76% of the cash on UConn. I'm sorry, I'm Purdue. But what happened? The line went from six and a half to seven. We call that reverse line movement against Purdue and Zach Eady. The total opened up at 148 and a half. It's down to 143 and a half out there. 45% of the bets, but 92% of the cash think defensive battle. Jose, I don't want to steal any thunder, but um, you know, maybe it's nothing official. But do you have any thoughts on how this game's gonna close out here to finish off March Madness in college basketball? Yeah, I'm I'm with you with the, the UConn trend. I think UConn beats the fuck out of them. Uh, I had Purdue to win the national championship. I've been saying that for uh, months. Um, but my hope was that UConn got eliminated by Auburn specifically. Um, but yeah, so I, I think UConn wins going away here. The reverse line movement um, is a factor for me here. And uh, I know it's a lot of points, but UConn's really that good, I guess, huh? Well, I see Trisha M says, uh, Purdue, come on. I got the seven and a half. And, um, you know, listen, uh, Trisha M, you have made – Plenty of cash with your NC State, your money lines here, your ACC tournaments going on into the March Madness situation. But I think it ends today here. You know, and I was talking to some, some friends about this earlier. I said, what do we see here specifically going on? Edie, Edie, Edie. It's the fucking Edie hype train, Jose. Everybody likes that. Everybody's got an Edie jersey all of a sudden. The hottest selling ticket across fanatics. Nonetheless, what did we see yesterday with Caitlin Clark? Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark, she's the one. Oh, she got into South Carolina and they fuck shit up. And that's how things I think go here today with UConn. One guy does not make a team. Purdue 
Good for them. They've had a tremendous run. Maybe they come back and they cover the spread, but I like this first half with UConn minus three and a half. And I think that the defensive battle is underrated in this spot for two reasons. One, uh, you look at kind of what's going on when you look at UConn. The second ranked two point defense in the nation. That's where the majority of the scoring comes in. And why do I focus on the two instead of the three? Because they're playing in a football stadium. The sight lines are different. Everything's off across the board with these guys. To me, it just seems like this has got to be a spot where UConn figures it out. Maybe it's not a quite blowout of epic proportions and Purdue hangs in there for the full game. But I like UConn, the favorite, to start this thing off. First half minus three and a half. And I like this game to go under. I'm aligned with my guy, Razor Sharp Jose. What do you think? Love it. I love it. I hope you cash. And uh, God bless UConn. I hope they fucking win. I thought I've been thinking about parlaying UConn money line and uh, Troy's cash cow and has to close above minus 205 for the Braves. But I've been considering uh, doing that. Just have some some money on it. I won't be watching. I'm actually right after leaving this. I'm driving down to ye old South Town uh, to produce two more shows today. So, uh, yeah, busy man. I probably won't watch a second of it, but I will be listening to the baseball. Jose Bouquet, it's always a great time to have you, uh, the newest guest here on Last Call Mondays. You'll find him here with the Say A Plays, giving you his looks to cook the books every single Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern. My guy, Jose, tell him what's cooking. I know you just said you're a busy man. You got multiple shows to host tonight. What's going on in the world of Jose Bouquet this week? Yeah, no, uh, two more shows tonight, obviously. Those are on Pub Culture TV. I'm sure nobody watches them right now. <laughs> But they're great shows nonetheless. They're funny, so shout out to them. And, of course, that live stream tonight for the National Championship. But get there a little early. Get to the Pub Sports Radio YouTube channel early because tonight at 8.15, 7.15 Central, 15 minutes before the stream starts, the 2024 Pub Cup officially debuts. Myself and Nick Snizzle versus Team Canada, Ghoster, and Spenny Penny Bombs. That video comes out today. It's a great one. It's about five minutes. A good watch. Uh, Canada came in there, minus 400, feeling good about themselves. And let me tell you, maybe some USA magic might have occurred here, Mikey Money. You got to watch to find out. But uh, trust me, it was a good, good time. Well, I'm eagerly anticipating the results there. I know... Um after drinking cocktails with those boys the night before into the early hour of the morning there, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they were able to put it together. And, uh, and, and, you know, does USA represent or does Canada come out there and, uh, you know, finally try to give one to the old red, white, and blue Jose. I hope not. I hope you guys were able to get it done for us, but we're here. We're done. Jose, it's Bo on the showtime. I know you're a busy man as well. I appreciate you coming out here rocking with us today. We got this thing in. It's a short slate today, but we're off location. We're having fun. We're having cocktails here. We're going to get after it tonight. We got a big 920 game for college basketball. We got the NHL in there as well. And uh, let's give him a shout out, Jose. Let's get this thing all up out of here. First and foremost, my guy T on the ones and twos keeps it tight and right. It's a well-oiled machine when T's behind the helm out there. Trisha M, Al Servic, Kelly B, Tori Coker, my guy Steve G in the house. Rocking and rolling. JPZ, if you didn't know, the guy wrote the motherfucking best intro that is Pub Sports Radio out there. Go back and listen to it. There's no question. It's unequivocal. They broke the mold after JPZ wrote that intro for us. Julian Cesario, Trisha M, Chris Tatum in the house, Ron Lofton. Kelsey up there says, you've gone minus six and a half. We're going to get after it again tomorrow, Monday to Friday here, Pub Sports Radio. If you haven't already done so, get to that YouTube channel. Subscribe. Turn your notifications on and every time. These guys go live. You'll be in the know, Jose. Until next time, my guy. Until we'll next time, Mikey. Soon. Appreciate you. Get that cash, Jose. Stay popping, baby. Let's go. Let's go.